Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be doing a review of Purple and Black by KJ Parker. This book has got to be one of the highlights of the year for me. I was completely, completely blown away. I know I've previously mentioned that KJ Parker has, is becoming a favourite author of mine. This book, this story has cemented him as a favourite author of mine. I was reading this book with Alan, so Alan started reading it and he sent me a message raving about it and I was like, okay, I've just got to start it. I finished reading it in about 90 minutes. I was completely hooked. I mean, it's a small novella, I think it's about 100 pages or give or take. I was just completely hooked. It's just such a phenomenal story. I cannot believe that someone is capable of creating a plot. It's such incredibly relatable characters in a hundred pages. That is absolutely insane to me. KJ Parker is vastly underrated. More people need to be reading his books. If you watch my channel and you like fantasy and you like characters, please, I beg of you, go and read his books. The one disclaimer that I always give is that his books can be quite dry. If you are not interested in lots of political intrigue, learning about economic systems, learning about engineering systems, then it's probably not going to be for you. But I would actually recommend reading this story as an entryway into his other books just because you get a nice flavor of what is to come it's just phenomenal guys i just i can't stop thinking about it the characters have really stuck with me the themes that kj parker tackles in this story are just so good so good so purple and black essentially follows two main characters uh, who are the main authors of the letters you follow nico who is the emperor he is essentially somebody who was never really meant to be emperor his entire family were essentially killed and then he was forced into that role and then you have Formio who is his best friend and he essentially uh, subsumes the role of a military commander they have been friends since they were at school and you know they start off as these very idealistic characters and then what you really see them as is these very kind of jaded individuals as you start this book so let's go into what I love about it so much. The first thing is I love the format of the story. The format is told in epistolary format. I, I don't normally like that. I find it very jarring. I find like you lose a lot of context about the world, but it worked. It worked really well. The letters back and forth between the two main characters that you follow, it just worked really well. And I feel like he's changed my perspective on this way of writing now. And I'm excited to read more books that I've got on my TBR that are actually in this format because he does something very magical with it. I think the fact that it's told in that way really helps the pacing. And that's that's something that I love about the story is, is that the pacing is ridiculous. You start from the first letter and it picks up straight away and is he is able to retain that pace throughout. I mean, I was like anxious about fi finishing it because I didn't want it to end. But then I also just really wanted to know what happened to the characters. And it's just, it's just crazy. I just, I don't know how, I don't know how anyone is able to do that in the space of a hundred pages. Like I just, I'm mind blown, honestly. It's just crazy to me. And uh, the pacing is just like, it never slows down. Like the conversations between the two main characters just really flow very well. You know, if you are someone who likes lots of world building and lots of context, then you're probably not gonna like this that much because you don't get tons of that. Despite that, you still have enough to get on with the story. And I just, I think that's remarkable to be able to do that in this format and then in a hundred pages, it's just ridiculous. The other thing that I love is the themes. The themes that it covers are themes that I'm generally quite passionate about. Uh, there's themes of friendship, there's themes of loss, there's themes of idealism, about wanting to change systems, but then not being able to because reality sets in. It's just such a beautiful story. Like the, the underlying themes that carry the weight of this story are really special in my opinion. Like the way that he writes about them just feels really special. You know, you're following characters who you start off learning more about them when they were at university and they had these notions about how they were going to change government and how they were going to build a democratic world for the people and really give power back to the people and not be a part of this empire that was very bureaucratic and very slow and was very corrupt. And then you learn as you progress through the book that even though they had these wonderful notions when they were younger, unfortunately they got bogged down in the reality of what being in that sort of system is like. The way that you start off getting this like really wonderful picture of these characters and then you get this picture of what is the reality and then you get this picture of what happens at the end, I just think it's it's just flawlessly done. Like I, I know I'm being like maybe overly verbose in how I'm talking about this book, but it's that good. 
it's honestly that good i'm not normally one to be overly dramatic when i love a book apart from when it's like abercrombie but kj parker is maybe my second favorite author at the moment which is crazy i mean i've read quite a few of his books recently and i'm going to be reading more of his soon i, I want to prioritize his books more now i just don't know how he does it i don't know how he does it i don't know how you can take what you did in the folding knife and then somehow condense that to 100 pages and do it for multiple characters it's just it's crazy to me i think he wrote that before the folding knife so that's even more phenomenal it came before the folding knife and he was able to do that it's ridiculous the other thing that i really liked is the character work you guys know i love characters it's probably the most important thing for me when I read a book. I really have to buy into the characters, their motivations, who they are, who they become. You know, you're following two main characters, Nico and Formio. They are best friends and, you know, one is the emperor, the other one is essentially a military commander. You really get a sense of their chemistry, their connection. You know, you're following them for even in the first like 20 pages you get such a good sense of who these two people are and what they mean to each other i've just i've never ever seen that before in any piece of writing before where you buy into that friendship pretty much straight from page one and that never goes away you, it never gets diluted as you progress through the story it just gets more and more rock solid and it's just super impressive i just i don't know how you do that it's hard to do that in a normal size book Doing that in a novella is like near impossible, in my opinion. Like seriously, like guys, if you know of any other novellas that can do some of the things that I've said, please tell me. Like I'm trying to read more novellas because I've normally had an aversion to novellas, but after reading this one and reading a couple of others recently, I started to realize maybe I actually do like novellas. And if you know of any good novellas where, you know, they're very much independent, I don't have to read like other books and it's very character driven and there's you know impact from pretty much page one please let me know because this has proven to me that it can be done if kj parker can do it then i'm sure there are other people who can also do it maybe not necessarily as well as him but i'm sure there are other authors that can do it too and like just the, the characters they're just so good <laughs> like this is just like this is the worst review that i've ever done honestly terrible terrible review i'm not really telling you much apart from the fact that it's so good but it's just so good. I just, honestly, I finished reading it and I like, I was reading it in bed and I just sat there. I was messaging Alan throughout and I was just giving him like my life thoughts as I was going through it. But after I'd finished reading it, I just sat there for about 10 minutes and I was like, damn, that's, that's how you write. That's how you write. And it's just, he's just phenomenal. I think the only downside for me is that I wish it was longer. I wish it was 500 pages rather than 100. I just, I don't, I, I just don't know how anybody could do that in such a short amount of time and yet make it feel so believable and make you feel like you're so a part of the story. It's just wonderful. Hats off to you, KJ Parker, genuinely. You are a master of your craft and I, it makes me sad that you're not as well known as you should be. And I think the books that he is known for are his like most recent ones and like, I'll get to them eventually, but I'm working my way through his back catalogue right now. And boy, is it an incredibly rewarding experience and I feel like everyone should go and do it. So that's my review. <laughs> that's my review of Purple and Black. I literally have nothing bad to say about it. Again, if you don't like, you know, learning about the military and all that stuff, then again, you might not like it, but it's not as intense in this one. It's very much present. Uh, you know, they talk a lot about bureaucracy in government and like, you know, there's one part where they talk about how, so in the, in the book by Subterranean Press, so I actually read it on my phone because I bought the physical subterranean press book and I left it at home by accident. And then when Alan was telling me that he'd finished it and he loved it, I was like, okay, I'm just going to pick it up on my phone. So I bought the ebook, which if you want to get the ebook, get it as part of the academic exercises ebook. You should be able to get it for about $7 from subterraneanpress.com. And so I just, I read it on my phone, which again, I've never done. I, I don't like reading on devices. I like having a physical book, but for some reason I could, I could read this on my phone mainly because I think it was just short and the, the letter format I think lended itself really well to reading it on a phone. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. The reason why it's called Purple and Black is, is that they use purple ink for official communications and black for unofficial communications. And in the book, they actually use purple and black writing to differentiate between the two. And there's this one wonderful bit where they're talking about the cost of purple ink and the fact that it's a very scarce resource and to even get purple ink is a very laborious task. And at one point, Nico has to go into his own private stash 
to give it to Formio so that they can write official communications. Like it's just, just like stuff like that. It's just like, it's really, it's just really well done. If you don't mind really learning about the inner workings of a government and the systems that they have internally, you'll really enjoy it. And like I said, I think this is a really good beginner KJ Parker to read because it's kind of what he does well, but on steroids. And if you don't like this, then you're probably not gonna like his other stuff. That being said, Folding Knife, Sharps, they are obviously, there's a lot more of that stuff in it. So if you don't even like it remotely in this one, then you're not gonna like it in his other books. So that's why I recommend starting here. So if I haven't already sold it to you, I don't really know what else I can say. If you like characters, if you like well-paced stories, if you like very thematic books where they're covering some really interesting concepts, just go and get it please just go and get it and let me know when you go and get it and let me know when you start reading it. I'm on a mission. I know Alan is also on a mission to get as many people as he can to read KJ Parker. I'm doing the same. I'm very much a part of this mission. He and I have kind of said that we will try and read at a minimum a Parker book every other month. So I'm excited about that. We will be reading The Hammer next month with Greg as well. And I believe they're doing a buddy read on, the, on his Discord as well. So. I'm really excited about reading The Hammer next month. And I think what I'm gonna do for myself, just again, at a minimum, is I'm gonna be reading at least one story of his every month, even if it's just one of his short novellas, because he's written a lot of novellas. And if you get the Academic Exercises ebook, you'll get about, I think there's about nine or 10 different novellas in there. And you don't have to read them in order. So go and get it. Please just go and get it. Go read it. Let me know what you think. And yeah, that's this review. Like I said, this is probably gonna be the worst review that I've ever done, but I don't really care because the book is that good. <laughs> so with that in mind, guys, I'm gonna stop here. Let me know what you think down below, especially if you've read it and if you're considering reading it because I will do whatever I can to continue to convince you if I haven't already. I'll see you in the next video. Please give this video a thumbs up. I always appreciate your support and I'll speak to you soon. Take care, stay safe, bye.